Hi everyone, I am Maria, welcome to CME, and let's talk ocean stuff. I am a marine biologist, or I am currently in the process of kind of becoming a marine biologist. I am doing my PhD. And people who work in this field many times come across questions such as why should I care? Why is the ocean even important? Why should we invest resources in protecting it? Why should we care about dolphins? Why should I care about tuna? It's tuna. This is gonna be the first video in a series of videos that I wanna do here on this channel where I will talk about the importance of the ocean at many levels. This video is gonna be about why the ocean is important for breathing. Specifically, I will be talking about why the ocean is important for the existence of oxygen in the atmosphere. Breathing is the process that brings air into our lungs when we inhale, allowing air exchange with the inside of our body. Mostly bringing in oxygen when we inhale and flushing out carbon dioxide when we <sighs> exhale. Oxygen is necessary for something called cellular respiration, which happens within our cells which is, well, not going in much into detail. It is basically a set of processes that allows us to produce energy from the food we eat. Energy that, well, keeps us alive than not being dead. Some archaea, almost all animals, including ourselves, plants, a large percentage of bacteria and fungi, all need oxygen to survive because they all do this thing called cellular respiration using oxygen. Okay, so now that that is out of the way, what does the ocean have to do with all of this? We keep on breathing, which means that even though there are 7.6 billion people on the planet breathing at the same time, plus all the other oxygen-consuming organisms that also live on the planet, plus all the other oxygen-consuming processes that happen and that we very much like to indulge in, we still keep on breathing, which means that there has to be oxygen coming into the atmosphere to replenish the one that we are consuming. Normally, we associate oxygen production with trees, which is not entirely wrong, since it is estimated that around 30% of the oxygen in the atmosphere is produced by rainforest. But yeah, only 30%. It is estimated that around 70% or maybe even more of the oxygen that we breathe comes from the ocean. And mostly it is produced by very, 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 very small organisms called phytoplankton. Most of phytoplankton is microscopic, which means we cannot see them with the naked eye. However, they are arguably some of the most important organisms in maintaining the world as it is. They are mostly composed of autotrophic bacteria and very, very small algae. There are thousands of phytoplankton species with different shapes and sizes. Some examples are Migrasteria radiata, Triceratium baliaricum, Triceratium morlandi, Triceratium polycystinorum, Navicula bulata, Ceratium purca, and many, 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 many others. And also, I hope I pronounce at least one of these names right. Just like plants on land, these organisms do something called photosynthesis, which means they use energy from sunlight to produce chemical energy that their cells can then use to keep living. They do this by utilizing the energy from sunlight to produce organic carbon-containing compounds, usually sugars, from carbon dioxide. Basically, they kind of produce their own food. And then, just like us, they use this food to produce energy that their cells can utilize to keep functioning and living. Fast recap, okay? We humans use nutrients from our food to obtain energy, consume oxygen, and release carbon dioxide. Organisms that do photosynthesis, such as phytoplankton, get their energy from sunlight, and with this energy, they produce their own food from carbon dioxide. That's why they are called autotrophs, which means they consume carbon dioxide, and during this whole process, they release oxygen. So, you see what happens here? Hmm? I smell a connection. That's weird. There is a cycle. We consume oxygen and release carbon dioxide. Plants and phytoplankton consume carbon dioxide and release oxygen. And just to make things a bit more complicated for you, organisms that do photosynthesis also do cellular respiration. Because once they produce their own food from carbon dioxide, they need to obtain energy from said food. And they use cellular respiration. So they also consume oxygen and release carbon dioxide while doing so. 
However, the amount of oxygen that they release is usually higher than the oxygen that they consume. Nature is complex. So this happens. And by the way, carbon dioxide consumption by phytoplankton is also very important in maintaining the climate as we know it, but that's something for another video. Even though phytoplankton is normally not seen with the naked eye, we can see them from space. Eh? Under specific environmental conditions, phytoplankton can be so abundant that you can see them from space. These are so-called phytoplankton blooms. These blooms can have many colors, from red, brownish, greenish, to a mixture of all those, and it obviously depends on the type of algae that produce, or the phytoplankton that produce these blooms. Just as ourselves, these organisms need nutrients to survive, develop, grow, and multiply. And blooms generally occur when previously limiting nutrients for some reason become more abundant usually either nitrogen or phosphorus. And then we have a huge phytoplankton fact. Then you would assume that when these blooms occur, because we have just seen that phytoplankton produces oxygen, that when these phytoplankton blooms occur, there's like tons of oxygen being released into the atmosphere, so we just should create tons of blooms and then we're fine, right? Wrong. Blooms occur because suddenly the conditions are perfect for these organisms to just grow and divide and multiply. What many times ends up happening is that because they are suddenly growing so fast and they are just so many, they deplete the nutrients that they were so happy to suddenly have. And when they deplete these nutrients, they end up dying. When the phytoplankton starts dying, they become food for bacteria, heterotrophic bacteria the ones that, you know, consume oxygen and release carbon dioxide, just like us. And because all the phytoplankton that was previously replenishing the oxygen in the surrounding atmosphere is dead, there is no new source of oxygen to counterbalance the oxygen that is being consumed by these very ferocious phytoplankton-eating bacteria that are consuming oxygen and releasing carbon dioxide. So as you see, microorganisms giveth and microorganisms taketh. Basically, there is a fine balance between the production and consumption of oxygen and carbon dioxide, a balance that we highly, highly depend on to survive, and in which phytoplankton plays a major, major role. So people, why is the ocean important for breathing? To put it simple and just referring to what I talked about in this video because there are many more reasons that are interconnected that make the ocean kind of important for us being able to breathe. Let's not go off topic right now. The ocean is the environment that supports the existence of these tiny organisms called phytoplankton that produce oxygen that allow us to breathe. Even if you live in the middle of the forest, in the middle of nowhere, on top of a mountain, in the most city-like city center, in the most distant place from the ocean on earth, which by the way is in China, you are still touched by the sea and you highly, highly depend on it to survive. To put it in other words, without it you would be dead. If earth were a body, the ocean would be its lungs, at least 70% of them. This was it everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave all your suggestions and comments in the comment section below. Like the video if you liked it and share it if you wanna. And uh, I hope you like this background. I'm still kind of figuring out the light situation because I'm filming at night now most of the times and I need in light and I know nothing of this really. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.